video we will talking about the introduction of cognitism so cognitism is a learning theory that focuses on the processes involved in learning rather than the observed behavior as opposed of behaviorist cognitive do not require an outward exhibition of learning but focus more on internal process and connections that takes place during learning and it is the psychology of learning which emphasizes human cognition or intelligence as a special endowment enabling men to hypothesis and develop intellectually and is also known as cognitive development the underlying concepts of cognitism involve how we think and gain knowledge and cognitive examples like students are being asked to draw in their experiences number two is assisting students in coming up with new solutions to problems encourage students to talk about what they're learning and assisting students in exploring and comprehending how concepts are connected and last students are asked to defend and articulate their decisions so cognitive psychology is also about an experiment science by running your own experiments and collecting your own data through this experience you will gain an appreciation of how we can use these methods to study the mind. It attempts to explain how and why. We think the way we do by studying the interaction among the human thinking, emotions, creativity, language, and problem solving. Jean Piaget or Jean William Fritz Piaget was born on August 9, 1896 in Nukatel, Switzerland and died on September 16, 1980. He is known for his works such as Constructivism, History of Psychology, Genetic Epistemology, and other works. He was known for his work on child development. Piaget's theory of cognitive epistemological view are together called Genetic Epistemology. Piaget placed great importance on the education of children. So what is cognitive psychology? Cognitive psychology is a scientific study of the mind as an information processor. Cognitive psychologists try to build up cognitive models as an information processing that goes on inside people's mind such as perception, memory, language, attention, thinking, and consciousness. Number one examples of cognitive psychology. Making a judgment about something based on information you receive that your brain processes. Number two example is Learning is an example of cognition the way our brain makes connection as we learn concepts and different ways to what we have learned. Cognitive psychology became a great importance in the mid-1950s. Several factors were important in this. Number 1. Dissatisfaction with a behaviorist approach and its simple emphasis on external behavior rather than internal processes. Number two, the development of better experimental methods. Number three, comparison between human and computer processing of information. The emphasis of psychology shifted away from the study of conditioned behavior and psychoanalytical notions about the study of the mind towards the understanding of human information processing. The cognitive approach is different from the learning approach because the cognitive approach it focuses on the internal mind works to influence behavior while the learning approach it focus on observable external behavior so the cognitive approach is about internal while the learning approach is about 
external, observable external behavior. Now, let's move on to principle of cognitive approach. We have three assumptions. The first one is limited capacity. The second is control mechanism. And the third one is two-way flow. Limited capacity. Our minds can only process a fixed amount of information at once. The info can be spread over multiple tasks. Control mechanism. There is an area of the mind that has superior processing power. It can control activity in other areas of the brain. The last one is a two-way flow. The mind takes info from the environment. The first one is the info flow. Once it's processed, produces a behavioral reaction. Then the output flow is that it has information and the reaction. So that means that the human mind is a computer which has an information and a reaction. We can move on to think about the first substantive cognitive assumption, the existence of schema. Cognitive psychology argued that we create schema to organize and interpret information about different experiences, that this information let us predict future possibilities. In other words, schema are a bit like filing happiness with store information about unique objects, actions of juries. To get a bit more specific, there are three different types of schema. First, the rule schema concerns expected behaviors for someone in a rule. You might expect the queen always be well managed and drink a coffee milk of a cup of tea or an athlete to be fit, well built and energetic. Second, the event schema, also known as scripts relate to what is expected in a particular situation. An example might be a bedtime routine putting on your toothpaste or toothpaste, turning off the lights and getting into bed. Third, self-schema, which is about ourselves and that is based on our looks, personality, and values. Lady Gaga, a self-schema, could therefore conclude met dresses, sassy dance moves, and telephone headpiece. But it's also more on values. Being psychology student, Sibling, friend, and tea lover. Do we know what schema is and how does it work? What happens when you come across new information that doesn't fit within an existing schema? New information is incorporated into an existing schema in two ways. First, option that is assimilated into the schema this happens when the new piece of information incorporated into an existing files meaning the original file remains the same it's a bit like if the four-year-old that told that animals have four legs or cats this creates a new schema about what a cat is the other option is the information is accommodated into the schema. This happens when the file was adapted to incorporate new information. In other words, an existing schema is also a result of a new information. For example, the child may late to learn the other dog has four legs. It doesn't actually fit in the cat's schema. And so the schema is changed or accommodated to reflect that. Piaget's theory argues that we have to conquer four stages of cognitive development. First, the sensory motor stage. Second, the pre-operational stage. Third, the concrete operational stage. Fourth, the formal operational stage. Only once we have gone through all these stages, at what age we can vary, we are able to reach full human intelligence. 1. The Sensory Motor Stage Ages birth to 2 In the Sensory Motor Stage, we develop experiences and movements our five senses. Our brain wants to see, hear, smell, taste, and touch as much as possible. First, we start with simple reflexes, and soon after, 
we have developed our first habits. From four months old, we become aware of things beyond our round body. And then, as we get older, we learn to do things intentionally. A key milestone is the development of working memory, or in Piaget's term, our realization of object dominance. But before that, our mom can show and then hide a titty, and we both think it's gone. After we understand that objects continue to exist even when we can't see them. We start becoming curious about everything. We want to smell flowers, taste food, listen to sound, and talk to strangers. To explore more, we moved, we learned to sit, crawl, stand, walk, and even to run. This increased physical mobility consequently lead to increased cognitive development, but we remain egocentered, meaning we can perceive the world only from our wrong point of view. 2. The pre-operational stage, ages 2 to 7. Our thinking is mainly categorized through symbolic functions and intuitive thoughts. We have lots of fantasies and beliefs objects are alive. As we are not able to apply specific cognitive operations, Piaget called the stage pre-operational. We learn to speak and understand that words, images, and gestures are symbols for something else. When we draw our family, we are not concerned of drawing each person to scale, but rather with the symbolic meanings. We love to play pretend, which allows us to experience something new and learn a lot. At the round age of 4, most of us become very curious and ask many questions. We want to know everything. We can call it the birth of primitive reasoning. Piaget called it intuitive age because while we realize that we have a vast amount of knowledge, we have no idea how we're quite it. Our thinking in this stage is still pretty ego-centered. We think others see the world like we do and still don't to understand that they see it differently. Third, the concrete operational stage in ages 7 to 11. We discover the logic and develop concrete cognitive operations such as sorting objects in a certain container. One example of this is inductive reasoning, which means that if we see someone eating a cookie, we can draw a conclusion and then make a generalization. And we now get the concept of conservation. We understand that if we pour orange juice from a normal glass to a taller one, the amount stays the same. Our younger sister will pick the taller glass thinking she gets more. By the same logic, we only now can understand that if 3 plus 5 equals 8, then 8 minus 3 must equal to 5. We now know that we can reverse action by doing the opposite. Example, we apply them in conversation activities when we learn to write and in school. Our brain learns to rearrange our thoughts to classify and build concrete operational mental structures. As a result, we get to know ourselves better and begin to understand that our thoughts and feelings are unique and not necessarily those of others that means we learn to put ourselves in someone else's shoes. Fourth, the formal operational stage age 12 plus. Once we become teenagers, we become formally operational. We now have the ability to think more rationally about abstract concepts and hypothetical events. Our advanced cognitive abilities allow us to understand abstract concepts such as success and failure, love and hate. We form a deeper understanding of our own identity and our morality. We now also think we understand why people behave the way they do and become more compassionate. Our brain now can do deductive reasoning, meaning we can compare two statements and reach a logical generalization. Our new mental skills allow us to plan our lives systematically and prioritize and we can make assumptions about events that have no necessary relation to reality. We can now philosophize and just think about thinking itself. 
A new sense of identity creates egocentric thoughts and some start to see an imaginary audience watching them all the time. Piaget believed in lifelong learning but insisted that we have a formal operational stage of the final stage of our cognitive development. Jean Piaget's first interests were animals and he published his first scientific paper on albino sparrows in 1907 when he was just 11 years old. In 1920, he began working with a standardized intelligence test. He realized that younger children consistently make types of mistakes that older children do not. He concluded that they must think differently and spend the rest of his life studying the intellectual development of children. What does cognitive mean? Cognitive is a psychological process involved in acquisition and understanding of knowledge, formation of beliefs and attitudes. Cognition is defined as the mental action or process of acquiring knowledge and understanding through experience and senses. It is in essence the ability to perceive and react, process, understand, store and retrieve information, make decision and produce appropriate response. Cognitive skills include critical thinking, perception, imagination, and planning. These are basic mental abilities we use to think, study, and learn. Cognitive learning theory, study of the process underlying the learning process. Cognitive psychologists explain all behavior in terms of thoughts, beliefs, and attitudes, and study how this direct our behavior. Cognitive Psychology What is Cognitive Psychology? Cognitive Psychology studies are meant to be processes or cognition. These mental processes that Cognitive Psychology focus on include memory, perception, thinking, and language. Some of the main assumptions of Cognitive Psychology include the following. 1. Internal mental processes are important features influencing human behavior. 2. The human brain is like a computer. It receives, interprets, and responds to information. 3. People problem often used due to family or original thinking. Cognitive Psychology According to NISA With the publication of Cognitive Psychology 1967, NISA brought together research concerning perception, pattern recognition, attention, problem solving, and remembering. With his usual elegant prose, he emphasized both information processing and constructive processing. Information processing is the change of information in any manner detectable by an observer. As such, it is a process that describes everything that happens in the universe. Electric neural activity which is feedback to the brain where it is stored and coded. Example the idea of information processing was adopted by cognitive psychologists as a model of how human tooth works. For example, the eye receives visual information and codes information into from the falling of rock to the printing of a text file from a digital computer system. Constructive processing referring to the retrieval of memories in which those memories are altered, revised, or influenced by newer info, insight bias, the tendency to falsely believe, through revision of older memories to include newer info, that one could have correctly predicted the outcome of an event. Example, remembering what a dog looks like upon hearing the word dog is always a constructive process one that involves the participation of influences arising from many experiences overlapping with each other in various ways and in various degrees. What did Ulrich Nisser contribution to psychology? He was 83, known as the father of cognitive psychology. Nisser revolutionized the discipline by challenging behaviorist theory and endeavoring to discover how the mind thinks and works. He was particularly interested in memory and perception. Nisser always described cognitive psychology as an assault on behaviorism. He was uncomfortable with behaviorism because he considered behaviorist assumptions wrong and because those assumptions limited what psychologists could study. In cognitive psychology, he did not explicitly attack behaviorism but instead presented a compelling alternative.
Nisser first pulled these areas together. He was frequently referred to and introduced as the father of cognitive psychology, as the champion of underdogs and revolutionary approaches. However, Nisser was uncomfortable in such a role. Why we need to study cognitive psychology? First, it helps us developing cognitive skills. So, o naman inisig na mga cognitive skills. So, these are the skills that brain uses to think, read, learn, remember, reason, and pay attention. They are the one who take the incoming information and move it into the bank of knowledge we use every day at school, at work, or in our life. Second, it allows students to build upon previous knowledge and ideas. So, makatabang sabi ni sa ato na kundiin ato ma-remember ma and ato mga nakaraan or previous na ito ng mga ideas, mga thoughts, mga informations, mga ideas. So, third, teaches us to make connections. Tungod kayo nagtudlo subsidya sa ato na makakimo kita ng mga connections sa particular environment na kundiin hae kita or kung hae kita pasingod. So, the fourth one, it helps us to apply new concept to what we already know. So, kumbaga pa, uh, maka, maka, makahimo kita ng bago kibalin na concept or ideas or information or thoughts na kundiin sa ato topic na daan na ito nahibayan. So, it allows children to understand the relationships between ideas to grasp the process of cause and effect. And last one, to improve analytical skills. So, uno man ini na mga analytical skills. So, these are, this includes logical reasoning, critical thinking, communication, research, data analysis, and creativity. So, amo dito si Jaan, mga analytical skills. So, here are my example of cognitive psychology. So, Making a judgment about something based on information you receive that your brain processes. So, kibali, magjudge kita. Like for example, jao na tao na kita nato siya, and then someone told us nan mga information about him na ing anak siya chuchu. So lain kibali siya nabatasan. In that particular way, magjudge nato siya tungod kay dilit nato kilaya. And then, tungod sab sa information na ato na dawat. So, that is my example about cognitive psychology. So, let us all remember that children should be able to improve their ability to focus, to remember information, and think more critically as they age.